Oh, morning, folks. Say, so here it is, uh, July 11th. I wanted to take you on a, a little follow-up tour of the hoop house. Remember, it's been about 10 or 11 days ago. I'll check the exact date on that video that I did on hybrid hydroponics when I hooked a nutrient solution, a hydroponic solution tub up to that string of self-watering planters that had the cherry tomatoes and those early girl tomatoes that were yellowing and they're on their way out. I wanted to show you what they look like now after 10 or 11 days. So let's head over there. This is the tub that we filled with the nutrient solution, the hydroponic solution. Recall this is the, the kit that we have available that has the two-part hydroponic solution and the lids for you to store the concentrate in two quart canning jars and each of the lids is labeled. So this is enough nutrient solution to make up 64 gallons of nutrient solution from the concentrates. So these are the peppers. And as you can see, we're, we're really starting to load up with, with green peppers now. But what I wanted to show you mostly is what happened to those cherry tomatoes. Uh, get on the other side here. Now, they're still a little pale, but these leaves were yellow and dying and these are the lower leaves so they're not the the most robust growing leaves at this point but i didn't trim any off and this is what they look like now but most importantly what's happened since i put them on the hydroponic solution is an explosion of blossoms and of trusses of, of little tomatoes <laughs> they were literally going to have hundreds of them. And we have ripening tomatoes. And they have just responded so well. The only thing is, it's, it's hard to convince a tomato plant to stop growing straight up and try to convince them to, to take, a, take a left turn and start heading up towards the peak of the hoop house. I don't want them hitting the hoop house plastic and... and over overheat or cook so these are those heirloom tomatoes that we got from north circle seeds and they are a very late tomato like an 80 day tomato but they are starting to set some fruit and these again are grown in some just some topsoil some of our compost i believe and then that good two to three inch thick layer of chopped leaves and all we've done is water them with rainwater. Over here the the uh, infamous habanadas they were doing okay without being put on a nutrient solution but yesterday I took this tote out and I added hydroponic solution not because the the habanadas needed them they're getting ready to explode with blossoms here that's just what they do I think they'd be fine without it but these two jalapeno plants at the end, their leaves were starting to yellow a bit. And so I figured, well, I'm just gonna put them on an IV drip too and help boost our, our fruit production on there. So why don't we walk over to the other hoop house? Here are those bell peppers that I started from seed. And that, that was a struggle. They, it took them a while to, to adapt to the hoop house and the heat in here and such. And, and they just kind of looked a little pathetic there for a while, but they're really coming on now and you know starting to 
starting to set some fruit. But this jungle right here, these are those Italian heirloom paste tomatoes from Fruition Seeds. <laughs> and uh, yeah, talk about a jungle. Again, growing in nothing but our topsoil and chopped leaves and employing a lot of earthworms to do our job for us. We've done no weeding. Basically all we've done is water them with rainwater and they are setting loads and loads of fruit right now. But they're again a, a late tomato, but they're coming on. There was a while there I tried to keep the, the suckers from taking over and they, they got ahead of me. Of course, most are two branch, some are three. That's a lot of trellising, <laughs> but I gave up on them. I gave up on uh, the suckers are just going to go from now on and, and it's just going to be a jungle and we'll see what happens. But I think uh, barring a, a drought or a catastrophe here, we're going to have an abundance of tomatoes from our living soil raised beds. So just a quick garden tour through the hoop houses and it's July 11th as I said so I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you up to date on hybrid hydroponics. It sure works for us in containers. It saves us. And growing in a living soil. Even though it's so hot in these hoop houses in the summer it's it's hotter than most people would think it's probably possible to grow tomatoes. But if you stick, stick your hand under these leaves, even in the heat of the day, it's nice and cool under there. The key to growing in a living soil is keep the worms happy. That's all we have to do. Keep that soil just to the right moisture level that the earthworms keep doing their job. They are decomposing those chopped leaves from the top down. And not just them, of course, all the decomposers in there. They're just the, the big ticket items. You know, they're the, they're the big mega, mega fauna out there. But sure works. So until next time, it's Mark again with Backwood Basics. So I think now more than ever, let's grow together. <laughs>